Okay, started recording. Right, so my name is Luis Rose, and I am uh, replacing Daniela. Daniela Mercury was going to present this webinar, but she got sick. She had a problem uh, with her throat, right? And so uh, I am replacing her today, okay? Uh, some people can't hear me. Margaret, you can't hear me. Let me send you a, a question, uh, an instruction, sorry. The rest of you, yes, the rest of you can hear me, right? Perfect. Okay, so uh, the idea today is to talk about speaking, especially for young learners, right? And during the webinar, I'm going to ask you some questions, and I'm going to ask you to answer uh, using the chat, right? And and when you when you type your answer, please uh, select send to all participants, right? So that everybody can see your answer. Because if you see, if you send just to me, the other people, to the host, right? The other people cannot see your answers. Okay? Okay, great. Thank you, Evan. Thank you, Giselle. Right, so the, the, the title of the presentation is Connect, Connecting to Speak, and the subtitle is how can Connect Revised Edition help your learners become better communicators? Right? In this sentence here, uh, we have uh, three main ideas. What are the three main ideas in the title? Well, the first one is um, Connect Revised Edition would be the last one. I'm going to talk about Connect in the end. But learners is the first one and better communicators, right? Okay, but before we st start talking about learners, let's talk about the four skills. Um, which one uh, do you think is the most important skill for your students according to the students themselves? Please use the chat to, to answer. Have a speaking, do you agree? Speaking? Yes, yes, that's right. So the most important skill for students, according to students, is speaking, right? And which one do you think is the most difficult skill for your students? No, it's not listening, no. It's speaking again. All right, so speaking is considered the most important and also the most difficult. And there are many reasons uh, why uh, this, is, this, is, uh, this is what students consider, why they consider this the most important and most difficult. The most important is because students nowadays want to communicate, right? And if they want to communicate, they need to speak, okay? Of course, you can communicate using text, but it's not the same, right? Uh, the, the other idea behind uh, the difficulty of speaking, it's because it's not um, um, a very easy skill, right? Uh, so it's... I, I would say it's uh, more difficult than other skills for students, for most of them, not all of them, but for most of them. And we will talk about that in a minute, okay? Um, yes, Cambridge has done a lot of research uh, because the, the University of Cambridge has uh, a department there uh, to uh, research language, right? And uh, they have also found out that teachers, most teachers consider speaking the most difficult skill for their students. Right. Okay, 
Yes, yes, this meeting is being recorded. I am recording the meeting. Okay. So when uh, when we finish this, uh, I will we will post Cambridge will post the link. All right. Okay. So let's talk about our learners, especially teenage learners. First of all, how old are they? Well, in this case, we are concentrating or we are talking specifically about young teenagers, right? Or the, what they call the twins, right? Between um, 10 and 15, okay? Right. So what are they interested in? Please use the, the chat box to, to give me your answers. What are your uh, young teenagers interested in? Young teenager, okay, social media, music, games, okay, excellent. Internet, right, games, TV shows, okay. And uh, what are they like? Are they uh, quiet, sociable? Very sociable. Talkative? Okay, excellent. Any other? Okay, good. And uh, uh, why, why are they uh, dates music? Okay, thank you, Daniela. And why are they in your classrooms? Why are they studying English? What do you think? What are their motivations? To travel. Okay, thank you, Daniela. Any other? Uh, they want to travel, right, to understand music, yes, tourism, okay, thank you, Elena. Yes, there are different reasons, right, future career, it, it would be great if, the, if they were interested in future careers, right, but they are mostly, most of them are more worried about the present situation, right, so they want to study, they want to speak, speak English, they want to uh, be able to communicate in English for more um, mundane things, right? <laughs> because their parents want them to learn. Yeah, this, this happens a lot, right? Okay. Uh, uh, Andrea, you can't view the, 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 the answers. That's strange because uh, if you send the answer to all panelists, everybody should be able to see it. All right? That's right. And uh, what kind of activities do your young teenage students prefer? I'm talking about activities in a classroom. What kind of activities do they prefer? Games, 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 games. Everybody says games, right? <laughs> Usually games, yeah, that's right. They love games. Music, okay. Yes, right. And uh, and uh, do you give them um, songs and games? Yes, yes, it's important, right, to keep them uh, motivated, right? Okay. Uh, one of the things, uh, do you know uh, who are the most influential people for teenagers nowadays, for young teenagers especially nowadays? Any ideas? Celebs, yes, they are influential, but the most influential, yes, Eva, you got it, Anderson, yes, thank you. Are the YouTubers? The YouTubers now are more influential than actors and actresses and famous people in general, right? So, uh, and uh, question: Do you have? Do you think? Do you have any YouTubers in your in your classes? No, 
Yes, you do. Margaret has one. Yes, yes. Some, some, some students become YouTubers, right? And even if they are not YouTubers, many of them would like to become one. But in order to become an international YouTuber, you need to speak what language? English, of course, right? So some students want to become YouTubers, and if they watch uh, YouTubers, international YouTubers, they need to, to know, they need to learn English, they need to be able to understand, and if they want to become international YouTubers, they need to speak English quite fluently, right? So most of the famous international YouTubers nowadays speak English quite well, right? And they are not native uh, English speakers. They are not native American or native British people. They are YouTubers from all over the world. Okay, so what does that tell us about your twins and things? Well, uh, it tells us that first, they want to become more and more international, right? They want to be able to communicate. And in order to do so, they need to speak. They need to be able to speak in English. All right? Okay. And the second idea behind the title was better communicators, right? Uh, in order to become a better communicator, what are the most important skills? Speaking, of course, is important. Uh, a twin, a twin, uh, the Diego asked the question here in the chat, and let me stop a second. Yeah, a twin, uh, it's a, a teenager that is between a kid and a teenager, right? So we call them a twin, it's uh, between uh, 10 and 15 years old. He's not a teen yet, but he's not a kid anymore. Okay? It's a new, a new uh, term that some people use, right? Okay. So in order to become better communicators, which, uh, which uh, uh, skills are the most important? Speaking, listening is important. All the four skills are important, right? Yes. Uh, but I would say speaking and, and also writing is important, right? Don't your, don't your students use uh, the internet a lot? Like uh, um, WhatsApp, Facebook?
Uh, it's recording now. Okay. Yes, can you hear me now? Yeah, I think there was a little problem with the, the connection. Perfect. So let's continue. Okay, so if your students want to communicate using text messages or videos, they need mostly speaking and writing, right? And speaking and writing are considered active skills, or they are also called productive skills. What's the difference between a productive skill and a receptive skill? Well, if you think about uh, Portuguese, right? If you ask your student to write a text or to read a text, which one do you think it's easier, to write or to read? Yes, read is easier, right? They don't need to think too much, right? Okay, so uh, reading is more passive than writing, right? The same thing with speaking and listening. Which one is more active or more uh, productive, speaking or listening? Speaking, that's right. Okay, so uh, speaking and writing are considered active skills or productive skills, while listening and reading are considered passive skills or uh, receptive skills, right? Uh, and uh, this is also true for many teachers, unfortunately, right? Uh, it requires more effort from students to produce things in sp using speaking and writing, but it also requires more effort from teachers. Think about a simple activities where you ask your students to answer the questions in their book. Now think about another activity where you ask your students to form pairs and role play a situation and you have to walk around the class paying attention to all your students and then help them and correct them and give them feedback. Which one is more difficult? Which one requires more effort? Of course, is the speaking activity, right? The pair work. It requires a lot of, uh, much more effort from the teacher, right? That's why we see so many students, uh, we see so many in reading, Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, okay, yes. Yeah, it's cutting, I don't know why. I think it's a problem with the internet because normally this does not happen very often. But thank you for telling me, all right? So as, a, as I was saying, uh, many students nowadays, uh, okay, thank you, Bruno. Many students nowadays, they can read, they can right, they can understand what other people say, but they have a lot of difficulty when they have to speak. And this is, and this is because uh, they have not practiced speaking enough. And practice speaking really requires a, uh, requires a lot of effort, and students need to practice a lot in order to be able to speak fluently. Do you agree? And this is not their fault sometimes, right? Sometimes 
the, the course book the teacher uses does not have enough speaking activities. Sometimes the teacher uh, uh, does not uh, ask students to speak too much in class, right? And sometimes students are shy, they don't like to talk, they don't like to speak, right? So there are many situations where we see students who have a good level of English, but when they need to speak, they can't, or they have a lot of difficulty. Okay? Yes, Margaret, you're going to, you left, right. Okay. Good. Thank you, Eva. So, how can we help our learners speak more accurately, confidently, and fluently? Well, the answer is three uh, key words. Practice, actually it's four, right? <laughs> so there are some key words, I said three, no, four. Uh, practice, memor memorize, internalize, and automatize. Okay? First one, practice. Practice, practice, practice. Your students will only be able to speak more fluently if they practice. So there, there should be plenty of uh, practice in your classes. Right? If you think you are using a material that does not have enough uh, speaking practice, try to supplement it with some extra speaking activities. Okay. Yes, it's a cliche. Thank you, Bruno. It's a cliche, but practice does make perfect. I agree with you. Yes, especially with speaking, the more they practice, the more fluent they will become. Right? The other uh, important uh, uh, aspect of speaking is memor memorize. So students need to memorize vocabulary, they need to memorize uh, expressions, the chunks, the language chunks, right? Uh, memorize uh, functional language, which language to use in which situation, right? So all of these, when they memorize these uh, um, uh, features of the language, right? Uh, chances are they will become more fluent, okay? And how can they memorize that? We go back to the first one, by practicing, right? The, when you practice more, you uh, memorize more easily, okay? Right. Uh, the third one is internalize. Uh, it's important for students to internalize what they learn. How can your students internalize what they learn? Any ideas? By practicing, yes, practice is important to internalize. Uh, what about uh, by um, making it personal or by making it relevant to them, right? Yes, by using it according to their reality, by experiencing experience real situations. Thank you, Margaret. Yes, uh, yes, so uh, students usually internalize the language when they connect to the language, right? When they feel the language is important to them, right? When they can express their opinions, when they can talk about the world around them, what interests them, the topics that are interesting to them, okay? So that's how they usually internalize the language. If you talk about something that's not interesting to your students, chances are they are not going to internalize it. So it will be much more difficult for them to 
remember it, to memorize it. Okay? And last but not least, automatize. How can your students automatize speaking, the speaking practice, the speaking they need? Any ideas? Uh, to know uh, it's Israel, to know and listen kinds of English, I think it's much important to, yes, different kinds of English, that's true, yes. Uh, have different uh, exposure to different uh, cultures, different uh, accents. All of this is important, right? Uh -huh. uh, chunks, automatize with chunks, uh, Barbara, or you were talking about the, the, the internal life. I'm talking about now automatize. How can your students automatize no, automatize, uh, with chunks. Yes, chunks, yes, 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 I agree with you. Um, if, uh, when they don't need to think, right? They, they learn the chunk and they automatically answer the question with a chunk, right? That's very useful, okay, yes, thank you. Any other, any other ideas? Insert them. What do you mean by insert them? Ah, in the culture. Okay. Ah, yes. Uh, so that they don't need to think if they are thinking about something else, right? If they are internalizing, uh, if they are uh, immersed in the situation, they don't think too much and they automatize the language. Yes, it's it's possible, right? Uh, another way, I think, uh, which helps your students to automatize the language is to uh, make them repeat, use repetition drills, right? Uh, when I started teaching many and many years ago, repetition, repetition drills were very uh, common, right? And then they were kind of banned. Nobody uh, spoke about them anymore. And they said that students were not robots, that they should not repeat what the teacher said, right? Uh, but nowadays, they are back again, okay? <laughs> yes, yeah, so many uh, scholars now uh, have found out that repetition is important, okay? Why is that? Because students can concentrate their speaking on the, 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 the subject, on, on what they want to say. And they don't need to worry about the language structure, for example, because it has already been automatized. For example, if you ask your questions, uh, if you ask a question, uh, um, did you go to the to the uh, club tomorrow? And you ask your students to answer full questions. No, I didn't go to the club tomorrow. And you ask them to repeat, I didn't go, I didn't go, I didn't go. When your students talk to you, do you think they will say, I didn't went? Or they're going to say, I didn't go? Chances are, if they practice a lot, if they repeated it a lot, they are going to say, I didn't go. So they don't need to think about it. Okay? I know this is controversial. I know some of you are not going to agree with me, right? But I've done a lot of uh, transformation drills with my students, and they like it. First, they like it. And second, uh, they think it's useful. And I think it's useful too. Okay? because they have heard it so many times, they have repeated it so many times, if when they hear another student say, I didn't went, it sounds strange to them. They have repeated so many times, I didn't go, I didn't go, I didn't go, that it's, uh, they, have all, uh, they say it like it's automatic to them. Okay? Uh, one of the transformation drills I like to use is, uh, is special with verb tenses, right? 
So I ask my students to uh, ask questions and answers using the verb tenses. Uh, let me try to explain how I do it. Let's say I have a class with uh, three, uh, four students, right? So I'm going to ask my students to make positive sentences, then ask a question, a positive answer, then a negative answer. So I start with the, stu the first student and I, t I ask him to tell a sentence using the verb play. So my student says, play. I play uh, soccer every day. Play and every day. So I play soccer every day, the first student. The second student, I ask the student to ask a question. Do you play soccer every day? The third student, I ask to answer positive. Yes, I play soccer every day. It doesn't sound very natural, I know, because they make the full answer, right? And then the fourth student, I ask to say the question in the negative. No, I don't play soccer every day. And then I change the tense, right? And then I say, now, and the first student has to ask a question. Are you playing, are you playing soccer now? The next student, yes, I am playing soccer now. No, I'm not playing soccer now. And then I change it. Yesterday, did you play soccer yesterday, etc., etc. So they have to focus 100%, otherwise they are not going to be able to do it. You got the idea, right? And as they become more, um, let's say, advanced, right? I include other verb tenses like present perfect or um, past participle and things like that. Okay. If you have 15 students, you have to divide them into small groups, right? And you have to walk around the class. You, you tell, you show them, you model the activity first, right? For example. Make a list with uh, five sentences, right? And they have to ask each other these five sentences in the present, in the or if you're teaching in the simple present, just ask them these five sentences in the present, positive answers, negative answers, and then they switch roles. Okay? Yes, I know big classes, large classes are much more difficult. I agree with you. For speaking activities, the smaller the class, the easier it gets. But still, with large classes, you still can do it, especially if you make pair work and small groups, and you walk around the class and check if they're doing it. Okay. Yes, you can use with uh, short answers as well. Thank you, Israel. Okay. Um, also, but uh, I think uh, if you really want them to, for example, especially with the past, if you want them to practice the didn't plus the infinitive, then you need long answers, right? Yes. Uh, of course, it doesn't sound very natural, I know, but it's not, in this case, it's not a question of sounding natural, right? And there are many variations. I think if you Google it, transformation drills in English, I think you will find a lot of interesting examples. Okay? So I do recommend you use them so that your students automatize the language and they don't need to worry too much about uh, the construction of the sentence and then they will concentrate more on the ideas they want to communicate. All right? Okay. Now, yes, yeah, so this is part of what I was saying, automatize. Do you know your CPF by heart? I suppose most of you do. Because, why is that? Because it's uh, automatized, right? Now let's talk specifically about uh, Connect. Connect Revised Edition, okay? Uh, Connect um, has uh, its uh, 
as an edition. The first edition, the second edition, and the new edition now is, co is called Connect Revised Edition. And Connect really helps your uh, students to communicate, uh, and especially to communicate using speaking. If you look at this page here, uh, each, less, each unit has four lessons, okay? And the lessons all end with a speaking activity, right? You can see it there. This is lesson one, unit one, book one, first level, right? And from the first uh, unit, from the first lesson, students are already encouraged to speak. Okay, and of course they need preparation. So you always have a model before the speaking activity. Okay, of course uh, after your students get more uh, fluent and more advanced, they don't need so much the models, right? So they, they, you, they you can ask them uh, to speak more freely, but in the beginning they need this model and they need to. Um, to uh, copy this model, right? Reproduce this model so that they can talk, they can speak. All right? Okay. Another example of the speaking activity. This is the uh, lesson two, right? From the same material. You see, you start with language, and then you have the model, and then a speaking activity. Lesson three, another speaking activity then. So there's a lot of emphasis on speaking in Connect. And Connect was a uh, uh, design, was created for Brazilian market, right? And it can be used with large or small classes. Right? The teacher's manual gives suggestions for large classes as well, okay? And also it can be used with uh, private teacher or private students. It can be used in schools like in uh, Ensino Fundamental 2, right? From 10 to uh, 14, okay? And it can also be used in private language schools. There are a lot of private language schools which use Connect. And they are very successful. But if you don't want to use Connect, no problem. You can use any other material, but do check if this material has enough um, speaking practice. And if it doesn't, please try to include it. Okay. Now, so what else does Connect have? Well, Connect also has in the back of the teacher's book extra speaking practice. Okay, so these are extra activities, photocopyable activities that you, uh, teachers can use to practice speaking. Uh, Connect also has some games, right? Um, in, in many of the games, students need to speak. Not all of them, but in many of the games, they need to speak. As you may have noticed, the, the manual is in Portuguese. The teacher's manual is in Portuguese, okay? And is in PDF, right? That's because it was made for the Brazilian market, okay? Uh, uh, Connect also has a website, right? The, in the Connect website, uh, teachers will also find a lot of uh, speaking, extra speaking activities. You see here, there are 32 extra speaking activities for teachers to use. Okay. And you also have extra grammar, extra vocabulary activities, class plan, you name it. Lots and lots of activities for you to use with your students. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, um, the uh, better learning concept or the better learning approach, 
right? The better learning approach is a new approach uh, created by Cambridge, okay? And where uh, we have uh, three uh, pillars, right? And these pillars are deeper insights, richer content, and stronger results, okay? So better learning, what does better learning mean? Better learning means that, uh, let me see the verbs here, I always forget. Uh, better learning uh, is our simple approach where deeper insights help shape richer content that drives stronger results. And this applies to all our materials. Right. In case of uh, specifically about uh, connect, the deeper insights is a result of uh, research, right, that is conducted at the university, okay, and also from the, the authors, right, especially Jack Richards, a uh, famous author from uh, Interchange, right, who is the, also the author of uh, Connect, okay and also Carlos Barbizan, who lived in Brazil for many years and knew our students and our reality, okay? And the richer content is a result of this experience and these deeper insights, right? And this richer content drives the stronger results. So you, you get to see your students make a lot of making a lot of progress, right? And and actually really speaking, which is difficult. Okay. Of course, it depends on the students if they make an effort, if they put an effort to to learn, right? So, Connect Revised Edition is a, is in American English, right? It has four levels, okay. Uh, and it was especially designed to motivate young, learner, young learners, young teenage learners through high interest topics and stimulating activities. And now the revised edition. In the second edition, we have the books separate. We have the student's book and the workbook. Now the revised edition is a, a combo edition. So it's one book with both the student's book and the workbook, okay? So students don't need to, come, come to buy the book separately anymore, right? And this uh, revised edition has a refreshed design with new covers, new graphic design. You see the, the changes. This is the second edition, the left. On the right, you see the new revised edition. You see the layout, the graphic design. Okay, um, and also uh, the photos changed. Uh, some of the text, many, some of the texts. There are some new texts in the revised edition. The photos, new photos. Now the book has uh, audio track numbers, so your students will know what to listen to. And extra activities, there are suggestions for extra activities with the page numbers, because these extra activities like the game or the vocabulary practice or the themes, there are projects, theme projects, they are always, also, always in the back of the book. So you have these suggestions in the book to, for these extra activities. Uh, the Connect Arcade is a, 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 a website for students where they can play games, right? It's free. Okay, it was also refreshed. And the Teacher's Edition was also refreshed and revised. And it's now in PDF format. So teachers can put it in a, a memory stick. It's interesting because once I said 
uh, pen drive in, in the UK, right, in Cambridge. And the, the guy there corrected me, no, it's not pen drive, it's memory stick. So I said, okay, so I'm not going to say pen drive anymore, right? In England, they don't use the word pen drive, just in Brazil, I think. <laughs> okay? Right. So, this is the teacher's edition, right? It's in color, it's color, it's interleaved. And it has the workbook with answers. And the price is quite interesting, right? Because with the second edition, students had to buy the student's book and the workbook separately. And see, this is a, I Googled it today. And you can see here, the first one is, is uh, the Connect Revised Edition, right? The student's book plus the workbook, 124 reais. The second book was the second edition. Only the student's book costs 138. So you see, you can see it's much cheaper now, right? So they get both student book and workbook, and the price is lower than it used to cost only the student's book. Okay. So uh, if you want to learn more, if you are interested in learning more about Connect, I recommend you go to the to the Connect website, right? Um, uh, go to. It's easier if you Google it. Put Cambridge Connect Revised Edition, right? Or you can go to the Cambridge website and look for it. www.cambridge.org. Okay. Uh, if you want to receive uh, an e-sample, this sample is a protected PDF. Uh, you can talk to our reps, right? If you don't know any rep, any Cambridge rep, any Cambridge representative, you can call our customer services. Uh, the phone number is uh, 11. 3146-3333, or you can send an email to, to our customer services. Our customer services email is atendimento.br atendimento at cambridge.org, right? And then, then they can send you uh, this uh, e-sample, okay? Questions. If you want to buy more than 10 books, okay, Margaret, uh, we usually don't sell directly to customers, right? We sell to distributors, okay? So you should, um, you should negotiate with a distributor like SPS, Giselle, Martins Fontes, okay? Right. If you negotiate with them, they will probably give you a bigger discount. All right. So it's a question of talking to the distributors. Right. Any other questions? Yes, I'm looking at the time here, and I just remembered once I was watching um, a conference from a British guy, and he said, well, we still have two minutes for questions because the, the, uh, he wanted to finish exactly at the time he was supposed to, right? And that's not us, right? We Brazilians are not so punctual, punctual right? Uh, yeah, so, but according to the time, we still have five minutes for questions, okay? <laughs> right. Uh, well, thank you very much for watching, uh, for attending, right, the, the webinar. And I do hope you can uh, participate again in coming webinars, okay? And if you want to watch this uh, webinar again, 
we will be uh, publishing uh, the recording. All right, I think in our uh, blog and in our Facebook page. Okay. Thank you very much. I hope you have a nice weekend. Thank you, Eva. Thank you, Daniela, Elena. Lots of people, 32 people participated. Yes, Roneide, Giselle. Mm -hmm. 13 years old. Yes, you can use with 13 years old, years old students. Perfect. No problem at all. Flavio, Chiso, mm -hmm. oh, Camila. Excellent. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. See you later. Let me stop recording.